Hi everyone, welcome to today's video. So when I was a kid, I used to watch a show called as WWF or WWE. Usme there was a character called as the Undertaker, and every few months he used to be dead, and then he used to become alive after a few months. So I used to get very entertained. Now Hindustan Unilever. is undertaker of the indian stock market basically right now it is a dead stock but going forward in the future my hypothesis is that it will become alive and it will start giving good returns so on this video i am going to decode entire hindustan unilever story for you and let me jump directly into the topic and let me show you one very interesting price movement of hindustan unilever aapko pata chalega ki you know what hindustan unilever is actually a multi bagger stock for example if you pick the time period from let's say december 2011 all the way till 2015 2016 then you will see that okay you know what it easily doubled right and then from 2015 to 2019 if you see then again it more than doubled but for the last 5 years if you see from here roughly 2020 to now it has almost stayed in that same range let me mark this for you also so you will see that from here to here this has been a massive consolidation zone for hindustan unilever on top of this you will see that the volume or the trading volume on this stock has been very less so in short what has happened in the last 4 years is that this stock has gone out of favor right i mean people are not really even talking about this stock anymore but on the flip side hindustan unilever is expanding its business it's launching new product so many different different good good things the company is doing it's a very clean management acha returns and rate karte hain they are they have that pricing power that they are able to price their product really well in fact in 2020 they were able to increase the prices of their product on top of that bhai sab suppliers ko you know unne dam nikal di and all that stuff that they have a lot of power over suppliers over distributors so on this video i am going to discuss the entire hul story in 7 8 key points so that you will have a better idea whether or not you should be buying more whether or not you should be selling the entire stake whether or not having this stock in your portfolio makes any sense do i have this stock in my portfolio yes am i happy with its performance absolutely not am i cribbing about it the answer is no because i have a good understanding of why i am holding this stock so i will explain you the story so the first key point that i will tell you before i move into the macroeconomic section is its technical pattern because technical pattern is where you will get an understanding of how much returns you can make so from here what you can notice is that if you look at this entire channel right so this is the entire channel and this channel started in 2019 and it broke down in 2022 so aapko pata chalega ki acha this was the trend that hul was following right so it was going something like this okay ideally if this trend would have continued then the stock would have been somewhere here okay so ab dekh lete hain ki if some day this trend is back and if hul is back from the dead like the undertaker then how much return could it potentially give so see it is likely to give approximately 77% run up i don't know when that will happen whether or not that will happen so let me decode the entire story but see this is the upside of the stock now what is the downside well we are already sitting on the downside because for the last 4 years the stock has given how much returns the answer is that it has given zero returns basically a time correction has happened on the stock this according to me is the worst that could have happened with hul that literally no one is talking about it bechara dubka pada hai kahin kone mein right and nothing is happening with it something similar happened to itc and now it has become like a multi bagger kafi acche returns usne banaye pata nahi kya kya but for a fairly long period of time itc again was a stock where hardly any activity was happening and something similar is happening on hindustan unilever so i hope the first point is clear regarding the risk reward that what is the upside what is the downside now let's move on to the macro section and let's try to understand what is actually happening at a macro broad level with hindustan unilever now the second point is that you need to understand the difference between hindustan unilever and unilever these two are different companies the unilever is the parent company of hindustan unilever and the way unilever has performed is really horrific right so the stock price has been down the business has not been growing so let me show that data to you first and let me then tell you why hindustan unilever is not equivalent to unilever okay but let me first show you the data there so you will see that again if you look at unilever plc which is the parent company it has done nothing in the last 4 years 0% returns and usse pehle bhi aise koi bahut mahan returns nahi bane the right basically if you check from roughly 
2000 राइट ईयर टू लेट्स से अप्रोक्सीमेटली 2020 राइट सो दिस इज 2020 तो कितना हुआ स्टॉक प्राइस ऑलमोस्ट लाइक ये 1800 पे था राइट एंड नाउ देन इट रीच टू लाइक ऑलमोस्ट 4000 राइट सो डबल हुआ इन 20 इयर्स सो अगेन हियर नो मैजिक हैज हैपेंड सो नाउ विल हिंदुस्तान यूनिलीवर व्हिच इज द सब्सिडरी इन अ वे ऑफ यूनिलीवर पीएलसी विल इट आल्सो विटनेस अ सिमिलर फेट so for this the number one point that you need to study is the balance sheet or the income statement of unilever plc versus hindustan unilever so isme aapko thoda sa fundamental data pata hona chahiye and macro picture you need to know so here is the data for unilever plc and the easiest way of understanding any business is just to simply ask that you know what how much revenues profit growth is the company making so you will see ki you know what its business was roughly like 57 to 4 here and then it fell and it has hardly risen right again it is stuck somewhere there so it looks that see you know what boss the revenues of the company unilever plc is not really growing or it's growing at very slow rate so aisa koi dhamake nahi ho raha when it comes to the parent company now what about gross profit operating profit so again you look at the profit tab so again aapko 25 yahan dikhega 22 is here 24 is here hardly any major growth is happening it's like you know it's flat lining that's what is happening in very simple words with unilever plc Now, what is the story with Hindustan Unilever? So, let us just quickly check the numbers for HUL also. So, here let us go to profit and loss, and here you will see that okay, yeah, three-four years ago, what has been the performance? So, okay, the company used to be around forty thousand crore sales. Now, it is at sixty-two thousand crores. So, there has been a healthy growth in revenues. What about profits? Has the profits grown proportionally? Yes, more or less the profits have grown. I'm not saying कि कुछ धमाके हो गए and you know बहुत ही अच्छे से बहुत ही तेजी से बढ़ गए and all that stuff. No, nothing like that. But still we can say that hey, this is like healthy growth in terms of the revenue numbers and profit numbers. So Unilever PLC cannot be compared to Hindustan Unilever. This is the second key point that you need to understand because the balance sheet numbers are telling us very very different stories for these two companies. Which brings us to point number three. कि भाई ऐसा क्या है कि हिंदुस्तान यूनिलेवर is still displaying like good revenue growth, good profit growth, or okay profit growth, but the parent company is not. So you need to understand the nature of the Western world right now. That Unilever PLC is a Britain-based company, right? UK. Now the population of the West generally is shrinking. भाई उनके लोग ही नहीं बचे, right? That's the problem. That population is in fact shrinking. So overall consumption is going down. On top of that. it's not as if that premiumization is happening there bhai unka income level is stagnating so to say economy itself is slowing down so a bunch of different things so for example it's not as if that in uk right even if you are in the lower segment of the society still you would be using these type of products right but in india a large part of our consumer based consumes unorganized sector stuff right so for example jaise dant manjan kar lenge right and not toothpaste सिमिलरली शैम्पू नहीं करेंगे आंवला शीका का ही लगा लेंगे विच इज मच बेटर बट दे आर नॉट यूजिंग लाइक एच यूएल शैम्पूज की रिन की टिक्की से ही कपड़े धो लेंगे एंड बाल भी धो लेंगे गंज हो जाएंगे देख लेंगे बाद में राइट सो सो ऑल दैट स्टफ इज स्टिल हैपनिंग इन इंडिया एंड जस्ट टू क्वांटिफाइड दैट मोर देन फिफ्टी परसेंट ऑफ आर मार्केट और इकोनॉमी इज इन अनऑर्गेनाइज स्पेस इट विल बिकम ऑर्गेनाइज सो टू कट द लॉन्ग स्टोरी शॉर्ट आर पॉपुलेशन इज ग्रोइंग आर इनकम लेवल्स आर स्टिल ग्रोइंग वी हैवेंट रियली used the entire thing here you know everyone is using like shampoo toothpaste this that stuff yes a large section has started using now moreover there is migration of unorganized sector to organized sector consumption mein fmcg mein bhi almost like 50 60% of products are still in unorganized sector space so this eventually will be taken away by companies like unilever and their peers so therefore the numbers are painting a very different picture for unilever plc versus hindustan unilever so this is the good part about hindustan unilever that fund Fundamentally, there seems to be no problem. It will still continue to gain more business. But here is the bad part, which brings me to the next point: that Hindustan Unilever is a defensive stock. Now, what is the meaning of defensive stock? Defensive stocks are stocks that protect your portfolio when the entire market is going down. For example, if the Nifty Fifty. which is the entire broad market it falls by let's say 20% then something like hindustan unilever will fall much less for example it might only fall by 10% 
ऑन द फ्लिप साइड इफ यू आर होल्डिंग फाइनेंस स्टॉक्स लाइक बैंक आपने भर रखे हैं राइट एंड ऑल दैट स्टफ देन दे माइट फॉल इफ द मार्केट इज फॉलिंग बाई ट्वेंटी परसेंट देन दीज बैंक एंड फाइनेंस स्टॉक्स माइट फॉल बाई ट्वेंटी फाइव थर्टी परसेंट सो वेन इट कम्स टू स्टॉक्स लाइक आई टी सी और हिंदुस्तान यूनिवर दीज आर डिफेंसिव स्टॉक्स इन अ बूमिंग मार्केट दे आर नॉट गोइंग टू डू एक्सेप्शनली वेल बट इन अ फॉलिंग मार्केट दीज स्टॉक्स विल प्रोटेक्ट योर पोर्टफोलियो दैट इज दी वेरी परस्पेक्टिव ऑफ ओनिंग डिफेंसिव स्टॉक्स ऑन द फ्लिप साइड देर आर बैंकिंग स्टॉक्स विच आर हाई ग्रोथ स्टॉक्स एंड फाइनेंस स्टॉक्स आर हाई ग्रोथ स्टॉक्स सो इन एन एग्रेसिव मार्केट दे विल गिव यू मच बेटर रिटर्न सो प्लीज अंडरस्टैंड द इनहेरेंट नेचर ऑफ हिंदुस्तान यूनियन लेवर दिस इज अ डिफेंसिव स्टॉक वॉट इज द टेक अवे द टेक अवे इज दैट इफ यू आर होल्डिंग हिंदुस्तान यूनियन लेवर राइट नाउ देन यू कैन नॉट कंपेयर इट विद समथिंग लाइक जोमैटो और समथिंग लाइक जियो फाइनेंस और समथिंग लाइक आवास फाइनेंसियर्स ऑल दैट स्टफ बिकॉज दीज आर द अदर सेट ऑफ स्टॉक्स जोमैटो एंड द लाइक्स दे आर हाई ग्रोथ कंपनीज हिंदुस्तान यूनियन लेवर इज अ डिफेंसिव कंपनी सो देन कम्स अ वेरी नेचुरल क्वेश्चन एंड द नेक्स्ट पॉइंट की भाई देन वाई इज इट दैट वी शुड बी होल्डिंग a stock like hindustan yen lever what's the point i have like you know 10 lakh rupees to invest i will only buy something like banks and this that akshat you yourself are buying like 85% banks this that see then it comes to the question of the type of investor you are so just quickly giving you clarity about my portfolio so this is what my portfolio will look like that approximately 85 90% of my portfolio will be in the growth sector or growth stocks 10% will be defense i do not have much fds this that sab bahut hi kam paisa hoga usme i use fd type of money for hindustan unilever type of stock so to say now within the defensive sector also i have diversification for example three or four of my biggest bets in the defensive sector would be hindustan unilever i have dmart i have itc not in my account in my wife's account so we still have a little bit of itc left i had sold itc earlier booked profits all that stuff but mostly for me that strategy makes sense because i am a growth investor but on the flip side there are investors who will say you know what boss mujhe bahut dar lagta hai i am very very scared about stock market falling this that stuff should i have hindustan unilever should i not have hindustan unilever you should have a little bit of defensive stocks it could be a combination of hindustan unilever itc wagera wagera etc why when that comes the interesting question ki you know what why should i even have hindustan unilever i can put that money in fd and get assured 6 7% return okay so for that i will take you back to that technical chart see for the last 2 years so from june of 2022 up until now almost june hi ho gaya ab to so 2 years 0% returns have been made on hindustan unilever okay you have already been through that fall right the stock has already been through that crazy bad time so to say so this was a really bad phase for the stock now it will come back to this zone maybe it will take 1 year maybe it will take 2 year maybe it will take 3 years okay now as long as the fundamental data is not bad the fundamental data not being bad means that revenues are growing profits are growing industry is growing at more than 6 7% then it is very very given okay it's almost given that this stock is going to grow at least at the rate of growth of the economy so india's economic growth rate will be somewhere around like maybe 6 7 8% percent, agar aap inflation inflation mila lo so there is no reason why hindustan unilever will not give at least 8 9% or even more than that returns on a long term basis ye bhi jo bhi new channel banega yahan se okay on top of that the gain for us will come because we are investing here okay so if majority of your money has been put here and if there is a short swing right so short swing ka matlab hota hai ki whenever it breaks or whenever a legitimate technical pattern is formed for example it might happen something like this okay something like this and then it will go up right so this becomes like a good reverse head and shoulder pattern so if something like this happens then the stock will go back into this zone and you will be able to make some money on a quick rotation okay so their approximate gain as per my understanding comes out to be roughly 46 47% and this gain should come in roughly 3 years time okay so iske hisab se aapka 15% cagr to banta hai right and there is no reason why 15% cagr should not be made on something like hindustan unilever on top of that you will get dividends okay now the only reason why this will fail is that if fundamentally something bad happens with the company for example sales kam ho jaye consumption kam ho jaye this that stuff second key reason could be the pricing power of the company ki bhai company is unable to increase the prices of its product okay third reason is that there is just something fundamentally bad wo hamare hath mein nahi hoti cheez so that is not there in our hand so on that note let me just help you quickly analyze these fundamental points number one point that do you think that hindustan unilever will be unable to price its product well 
The short answer is no, it's not as if that they will struggle to increase the prices of their product. They have consistently done it in 2021, 2022, 2023. So this is taken care of. This will not be a problem. Second key point that the company is witnessing something called as volume growth issues. Now volume growth ka matlab kya hota hai? See, aap yahan se ye dekh rahe hoge ki it is selling roughly 62,000 crore. Okay. And 62,000 crore, maan ke chalo, right? Ki, I mean, for example, yahan pe, they were making 40,000 crore and they were selling, let's say, uh, 40 million bottles of shampoo to do this sales okay right now also they might be selling only like 42 million bottles of shampoo to do the 60 crore sales their number has gone up or revenue number has gone up why because they have been able to increase the prices not the quantity so revenue kya hota hai? price times quantity right now the analysts are telling us that hey in hindustan unilever this quantity has not really gone up not new and new people are buying more products all that it's only the price increase that is happening, okay? And Hindustan Unilever ke case, mein, they, what they do is that they do inflation targeting, right? So if real inflation, the economy is growing by, let's say, 10%, Hindustan Unilever, apne product prices will increase by 12%. So that is how they are able to grow their revenues and grow their profits. So I don't think that this lack of volume issue is a major issue. It can be taken care of just simply because of price rise. Yes, we don't have to company is unable to increase its prices okay folks so let me take a very quick pause for the video for 20 seconds and talk about something which i am doing so i'm organizing an investment summit in mumbai my hyderabad investment summit is fully booked this investment summit will be taught over four days there will be roughly 16 to 20 hours of live teaching that will be there you will learn a lot about investing if you're a beginner intermediate player advanced player this is an roi positive course you will learn about mutual fund investing you will learn about real estate you will learn about a bunch of different investment options and how you can create a solid portfolio across all these different branches at least you will have clarity i will teach everything practically by bringing in my own experiences thank you so much for listening in case you are interested the link is given in the description and comment box please check it out now back to the main video so on that note let me analyze the next point that hey will pricing take hit now pricing can take hit on two bits one is that whoever the supplier of hindustan unilever is ki maan ke chalo shampoo bottle banate hain detergent banate hain they are the raw material guys right they will provide a bunch of raw material to hindustan unilever hindustan unilever will do factory production of that and will give it to its distributors and distributors will then sell it to different different parties okay now here is the data that is coming out on the distributor side ki bhai unne distributors ke liye nayi policy le aaye you guys can pause the video Video, read it here you will understand it more and distributors are a little bit sad and all that stuff see that's a good step for the company and as a shareholder you should be happy well are they messing up with distributors yes can distributors do anything about it no hindustan unilever is a capitalist business and they are doing right by their shareholders i'm neither defending or supporting this move i'm just simply telling you what the reality is now then it comes to suppliers ki bhai inka raw material bada hoga they would have increased their prices for hindustan unilever is this happening yes this is definitely happening because inke expenses bhi badh gaye right i mean you can clearly see that but are they able to still protect their profit margins? The short answer is yes. And this needs to be seen in the context of the next point that the consumer demand in India has been really, really bad for the last two years. Consumer durable stocks have been beaten down like anything. They have corrected by like 30, 30, 40, 40%. Up run up shuru hai. Why? Because the consumer demand was horrible. Hindustan Unilever, how much has it lost from its stock? Not much, I would say 10-15% from its stock, so to say. So it's not as if that consumer demand ko leke Hindustan Unilever mein bahut zyada problem ho gai hai and they are unable to handle this problem. Well, they are able to handle this problem. It is just that, that hey, this is going against the tide. Whenever the consumer demand picks up, there will be legitimate beneficiaries like Hindustan Unilever from that entire game. But the consumption needs to pick up. The consumption is really weak in India. This is a major macro issue. This is not Hindustan Unilever's fault. But whenever the consumer demand comes back up, Hindustan Unilever is going to benefit from it. And when I have technical pattern, tha, that is likely to play out there. Okay, so the next point will come that, okay, you have decoded your story decode kar di. And guys, if you are enjoying this video, do consider liking it and sharing it with your friends. It helps with the channel growth. And it indicates to me 
that you would like me to make these type of more detailed videos. So, okay, back to the topic. The next point is that see, any company grows when there are growth triggers left. Now, what is the meaning of growth trigger? For example, if Hindustan Unilever can end up manufacturing newer type of products, it can enter into new products, it can enter into new geographies, it can do something really amazing and they are able to create an unlock a new revenue stream so to say now can these things happen because one of the counter arguments that i keep on hearing is you know what that hindustan unilever is a big player now small small players like mama earth will come they will eat into their business this that stuff so is that going to happen is that not going to happen what is your thought so okay so my thought is this that i don't think that mama earth Vagara are going to do make any dent on hindustan unilever's business per se why because Hindustan Unilever works on umbrella marketing. Now, umbrella marketing ka matlab kya hota hai? that they have created a bunch of sub brands. Okay, so it's not a Hindustan Unilever ke brand, pe nahi chiz hai, right? I mean, for example, Lifeboy might be a brand, you will have Surf Excel might be a brand, all that Horlicks is a brand. So these are individual brands to begin with. So in that space, Hindustan Unilever, for example, you can see that HUL ramps up premium beauty business post spin off. And in case, kon kon se businesses hai? they have something called as Tresame and Lakme. So Lakme ke mein everyone knows but Tresame is like an up and coming brand in fact it's established brand now. So they are creating these small small type of brands which is still growing really fast. For example if you just take a look at it what you will see is that the premium beauty business have reached an ARR or annual recurring revenue of 100 crores in record time crossing the mark in fiscal 2023. So it's not as if that Hindustan Unilever sub brands are struggling to compete with like new age players this that. In fact it's the opposite that newer players are struggling to compete with Hindustan Unilever. But people are partially right that Hindustan Unilever going forward in the future it is going to face competition. From whom? Mostly from its established people years like ITC. I feel ITC is one of the biggest competitors or going forward it will become one of the biggest competitors for Hindustan Unilever and it will eat into its business. Okay. Now the good thing is that the market overall FMCG is still expanding. It is still getting converted from unorganized to organized. The growth in this industry will be slightly better than the growth rate of the GDP. So given all those points I think there is enough room for both these companies to expand even in the future and as a good defensive stocks both these stocks are fine so okay so let me start summarizing some of the key points number one hindustan unilever is not a bad business it's a good growing company there is nothing wrong number two right now it is available at good prices there is again nothing wrong number three it will re-enter that channel it's almost given that it will re-enter and the potential gains would be somewhere around 75 percent it might happen in one year two year three year number fourth buying hindustan unilever is a bet on buying defensive stocks it protects your portfolio. It serves a very specific purpose. If you're looking for growth, then buying something like Zomato or IDFC First Bank, all those might make more sense because those would be faster growth businesses compared to something like Hindustan Unilever. But a portfolio is constructed sensibly. It is not constructed, you know what, growth companies early, you have defensive companies early. No, your portfolio should be balanced. That's the point of creating a good portfolio. Again, you can check out my courses. I teach portfolio construction end to end, how to to handle mutual funds, how to create a portfolio within the mutual fund space, in equity space, how to bring in alternate assets, alternate investments. All these pointers are given in a point wise manner. You will be able to follow along with the course. So I would highly encourage you to check it out. And the last point is that please do not compare Hindustan Unilever with FDs. Hindustan Unilever is a much better company your post-tax returns on Hindustan Unilever are likely to be much, much better compared to any defensive thing that you could buy. But please understand that if you are investing in Hindustan Unilever, you are buying something which is defensive in nature. I hope that you enjoyed this conversation and I will see you soon.